On a dramatic location the island of Sicily, in view of the Ionian Sea, this ancient theater was built in the 3rd century BC. In this video we will walk through the site and discover its transformation from an ancient Greek theater to an elaborate Roman theater and finally to a Roman arena for gladiatorial games. Join us as we explore the theater of Terramina in Sicily. The theater of Terramina was built on a rocky mountain ridge with views of the ocean and on a clear day of the active volcano Mount Etna. With a diameter of 390 feet, it is the second largest theater in Sicily, second to Syracuse. The original theater was built during the time when Sicily was settled by Greek colonists. The Greek theaters were built into the natural landscape rather than Roman theaters, which were freestanding buildings. Since this theater was carved into a large mass of rock, the rock itself was used as seats, and stone was added in areas where the rock was missing. Some inscriptions found on the stone seats date the theater to sometime in the 3rd century BC, due to the type of script that was used. The entrance to the Greek theater for guests was approximately where this large opening is today. This leads through the orchestra, which is the area at the bottom of the theater where musicians and singers would dance and interact with the actors on stage above. The stage of the time was smaller than the future Roman stage and the modern stage we see now, which allowed the orchestra to be larger and possibly a full circle like this one at Epidaurus in Greece. Even after Sicily was annexed as a province in the Roman Empire in 241 BC, the city of Terramina still held the status of an allied city and retained its Greek culture. Roman colonists entered Terramina after the defeat of Sextus Pompeius, who was the son of Pompey the Great, and had a fortress in Terramina. In 36 BC, a great sea battle occurred off the coast of Sicily, where Octavian's forces led by Agrippa defeated the fleet of Sextus, and Roman colonists entered Terramina. Later, likely in the time of Emperor Hadrian, the theater was greatly enhanced and reconstructed. The large covered walkway, supported by 47 piers, was created on top of the theater, and two vaulted basilicas were created on either side. The scene behind the stage was rebuilt and enhanced, and was several stories tall. This was an elaborate building at the back of the stage, where actors would also store props and change costumes. This would have been an impressive sight, covered in marble and different colored stones. Some of its former glory can be seen in the square column capital inserted above the doorway during restoration. These would have framed the doors in a similar way to these at Jerash and Jordan. The head of a former statue in the theater can be seen in the small museum on the site. The stage itself was extended at this time to make the orchestra a semicircular design, and some seats were cut off on the sides with the retaining wall added. Since the stage was extended, the original entrance now went onto the stage, and new entrances had to be created for spectators. This new theater was larger than the original Greek theater, and at the time held around 10,000 people. It was even larger than it appears today, with additional wooden seats extending up to the top. These wooden seats were covered by a permanent roof, which was supported by these columns, each of which connected to an arch to support the roof. What we can walk on today is a passage that ran under the seats, and wooden stairs were once here to access the seats from this passage. An additional roof also existed to cover the rest of the seats, which could be moved by ropes as needed. Sometime around the year 200, probably during the reign of Roman Emperor Septimus Severus or Caracalla, the theater was converted into an arena for gladiatorial games and animal hunts. The bottom rows of seats were completely removed, and the floor of the arena was lowered as well. The seats were now 8.5 feet above the arena floor to protect the guests. The stage was also removed, and the scene behind the stage was changed somewhat and simplified. There was now no way to access the seats from either of these entrances, and the viewers had to enter from the top of the theater rather than the bottom. One entrance was likely added here, and other passages were created from the top to connect the area of the wooden seats, which were previously isolated, to the rest of the seats below. This corridor was created around the arena near the seats. The function of this is not known, but could have been used to transport animals. A basement was dug under the arena, which is common in Roman arenas like this one in Italica and these elaborate tunnels in the Colosseum. These were typically used for storage and also to lift props, scenery, and animals up onto the arena floor using a system of ropes and pulleys. Since there was now no access to the seats from the arena, these basilicas would now have been closed to spectators. So this area would likely have been a more dangerous area where animal cages were kept. And this large entrance would now be the entrance to the arena floor. In later centuries, some stones were removed from the theater to be used in other structures, but parts of the scene remain standing to form the ruin we see today. Thanks for joining us at History Victor. my name is James. I'll include a link in the description to another video showing the reconstruction of the theater if you're interested. Feel free to check out our other videos as well in Sicily and other places, and thanks for watching.